Okay guys, welcome to another FSD video. Today I'm in rainy Washington, uh, specifically in Tacoma, getting ready to leave my Airbnb. And I rented a Tesla Model 3, and it is the latest Model 3 with hardware four, um, also known as the Model 3 Highland. I gotta say, like before we begin this FSD drive, it has been such an awesome car and I drive an uh, 2022 Model 3. So having this has been really, really cool to, you know, to play around with and, and see like the different refinements that Tesla made between the old Model 3 and the new Model 3. Um, and honestly, there's more refinements than I thought, but this isn't really a review of this car. This is more of a review of FSD. And basically we're running uh, 13.2.9. Uh, which I believe is the latest full self-driving. We're gonna get this thing going. So with these hardware four cars, all you have to do is tap and hold and it will actually begin the whole entire drive. Um, well, it should at least, let's try again. Tap and hold and there we go. And this is one of the cool features of hardware four is that the car will actually back out of the spot for you handles that beautifully and here we go so i just put in a random destination it's about 15 minutes away and um after this i'm going to the airport so i'll be returning the car so i figured i would bring my camera and do a little fsd video um and these streets are different than phoenix you know phoenix is very um open and linear and this is more hilly and it has like different terrain to it so it's cool to like see how it works and honestly it works really well um it works just as good as it does in phoenix including freeway driving it's fantastic i had friends in here and uh, one of my friends she had never been in a tesla let alone seen full self-driving and her opinion was kind of negative of Tesla's before she got in one. And now she's like a pretty big fan, which is really cool to like change someone's perspective and opinion, you know, once they get to experience the technology and see exactly how it works. So we'll do the full visualization here. Sorry about that. I meant to have that on from the beginning. Um, and right now, I mean, this is going to be pretty basic as far as driving to this park. There's not like a whole lot of like turns and like crazy, crazy things. Um, I wish there was a little bit more to this drive. I could always turn off the GPS, but I think we'll just leave it. Um, Tacoma is, for those of you who aren't aware, Tacoma is basically like a little city outside of Seattle. Um, and it reminds me a lot of San Francisco or just California in general for some reason. It just gives me that vibe. Um, Tacoma's a little bit rougher than actual Seattle, I guess, from what I've been told. So we came up to the light here. Pretty good stop. I will say if we're comparing between hardware three and four, just like in the Cybertruck, it's pretty similar. Um, I will say that the Cybertruck, in hindsight, does struggle with FSD a little bit more um, because it's such a bigger vehicle. Like FSD was really built for the Model 3 and Y, and then they create it for the Cybertruck Model S and X, which are bigger cars. Um, but I will say that it does a really good job in the Model 3. So you guys saw that BMW, it kind of pulled in front of me crazy and then did some weird maneuvers. It was, um, you know, the a little bit crazy the way he was driving, but the Tesla did a good job at handling, handling him and keeping distance. I have it on standard mode right now. We'll kick it into hurry mode but lock the speed in at 35.
this is the first like really rainy day since I've been here, but um overall like it handles rain really good. You know, it sometimes will randomly put on the windshield wiper even when it's not raining, but um overall like it FSD can handle rain pretty good. So um I don't think that there's much issue with that. Now it's not like a storm, it's not like storming outside, so it's a little bit different um, in that situation. I would like to see how it works, especially in a hardware 4 Model 3, but it's not right now. Which is probably a good thing because I'm getting ready to fly out. There was a turn yesterday that was really weird. You know how some of these big cities are. They have weird little turns and, you know, side exits and weird stuff. And so we were making a left-hand turn, but then the car had to get all the way over to the right to make this right-hand turn to get on the freeway. And when we made the left-hand turn, because it was like you could either go straight or it was separated by the immediate right-hand turn, the car struggled with that and ended up going the wrong way. So it almost made the right decision, but it it didn't. And that was really the only thing I can think about it doing wrong in Seattle, like while I've been driving it. Other than that, it's literally been flawless. Like Tesla is definitely on the cusp of fully solving uh, vision based full self-driving you know that's back in the day there were so many like mistakes I would have like 10 mistakes 20 mistakes in, a, in this period of days but to have one major you know it wasn't even major one minor screw up I mean that is it's amazing to me just because I've been using this tech for years um and just to see how far it's came is so incredible. So this car is pulling over. Nice, handle that great, no hesitation. It's so green and beautiful here. It's so different than Phoenix. Like, it's, it's just crazy to see this. I know a lot of you are probably in places where it looks like this, so this is nothing to you, but living in the desert, the snoring desert, just surrounded by cacti and, you know, no rain. It's just hot all the time. It's, it's really a treat to be in a place like Washington. So right now we're about seven minutes away from this park. And we don't have to fully go to the park. You know what I might do? I might, uh, turn this off so I'm going to end the trip it's telling me and the reason why I'm doing this because I want to like let the car kind of go where it wants to go but also uh, one of the big updates recently while I've been here in Washington was Tesla did an update where the attention monitoring in hardware for cars is not as strict and so like you have more time to like go on the screen and do things you need to do uh, and that's really nice. I've, I've definitely noticed that. Like, it's not yelling at me as much. It still will yell at me if I'm looking at it for too long, but it's not, like, immediate. And I'm not wearing sunglasses right now, so um, this is actually, like, a really good test. So I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to just select the Airbnb and have the car head back toward the Airbnb. And there I'm getting yelled at. I need to pay attention to the road. So that, you know, it was a little bit longer. Not, you know, it wasn't like as long as I'd like it to be. It should give me like a good 30 seconds. So we got this guy crossing the road on the bike. He was a little bit far away though. So didn't have too much of an impact. So now we're going to make a left here. Nice. Did that turn pretty good. Mm -hmm. 
So we got this truck here. Good, it kind of got over a little bit to let that car go by. That was good behavior. All right, we're here at this light. And one thing I do want to say is um, this Turo host was awesome as far as being able to pick up this car and also having FSD enabled. Originally, when I booked the car, they were like, this car doesn't have FSD. We have other hardware three cars, other older Model 3s with FSD. Would you like one of those instead? And then I explained to the guy that I really would like it on the new Model 3. Um, and he made it happen. So these, this is a great Turo host if you're in the uh, Seattle, Tacoma area and you need the latest Tesla Model 3 with FSD, this is a good one to pick up. So link in the description. And if you're looking to buy a Tesla car, uh, please make sure to use my referral link in the description as well. But anyway, we're headed back toward the Airbnb. We got this red light here, come to a nice smooth stop. Make a left-hand turn here, and it's one of these flashing yellow lights with a car incoming, but it's still a little far away, so it's gonna go for it. Very nice turn, smooth. Like, you really wouldn't even know that I wasn't driving. You know, if you were in the back seat with a blindfold, you wouldn't think a robot was driving you because it's so, like, it's just so smooth. It's really crazy. Take a look around the visualization here. Oh, it's telling me to pay attention to the road. So it's about like, I don't know, maybe five to 10 seconds. Whereas before it would yell at me after like literally two seconds. So I would just put on sunglasses and it tends to not be able to track your eyes as well. And so you get more time on the screen if you're wearing sunglasses. So that light turned red pretty quick, but the car once again, a nice easy stop at this intersection. And here we go. I wish I had more time. You know, I was spending a lot of time with my friends. I wish I had more time to make content on this specific car, um, but I definitely will be driving one of these again and I would like to make a review, like especially as someone who drives an older Model 3. Um, it's just the refinements. I know I already said it in the beginning of the video, but the refinements are so good. It's just the road noise, it's so much quieter. Uh, the, the dual paned windows in the back You've got just a really comfortable ride. Even my friend, Elijah, who was in the car, she was like, wow, the suspension on this is so nice. Like, your Model 3 is so sporty and rigid. I'm like, yeah, I know, it's, it really is. It's very different. Here we go. I wanted to go down some of those cool hills, so I'm going to turn off the Airbnb and maybe go like toward, oop, getting yelled at, go toward Pacific Ave. Oh, okay, so we're going to intervene. So if you change, <laughs> So first intervention, if you change the instructions mid-drive, 
just be prepared for the car to do that. It shouldn't do that. It should reroute. Um, it didn't, which, you know, was going to make a really dangerous move there. Um, I feel like it should just automatically reroute, but oh well, that you can at least see what happens if you change instructions mid drive. But this is like, you know, these super hilly roads like this. This is like crazy to see this for FSD. So I just wanted to go down one of these streets because it's like so San Francisco like. It's so crazy. Go through this intersection here we got road work i am actually going to put the airbnb back in now so we'll make a right here and here we got an obstacle so we got this really weird parking situation we got this big truck nice so we get off to the side let the truck pass very good cautiously going around these cars and now we're going to turn here this is this looks pretty tight but we're going to go for it straight up this hill nice it's going pretty slow but it's being cautious it's you know, not the, wow, yeah, big pothole to the right there and avoided that. Yeah, that's a crazy straight right there. Wow. And now we got to go straight across this road here, which is going to be interesting because there's not great visibility either way with these parked cars. So it's going to inch forward into the intersection. Very good. So I just turned off the map because we're going to go left. I wonder if I hit the left turn signal. Will the car ignore me or will it keep going straight? Yep, keeps going straight. Well, I'm going to turn it off right here and take over. We didn't really have a fixed destination for this video like we do in other ones. Um, but yeah, you got to really see how this thing handles FSD in a different environment than Phoenix. It is definitely really good. Really, really good. Just don't change the directions midway through um, because of it, like right when you need to turn because it'll do that dangerous thing that it just tried to do, which isn't great. And Tesla should really, you know, fix that so that it reroutes. Like if it's, if you're too close to where you need to turn and you change the instructions, it should go forward a little bit more and then make the turn where it's safe versus just being like, oh, I got to turn here right away because you just changed the instructions. That's not great. And also another criticism is like, if it can't make an exit on a freeway, it'll sometimes do like something really dangerous. Like it'll just stop in the, in the, uh, middle of the freeway because it it wants to take that exit no matter what so it really you know really shouldn't do that but it does do that behavior at times which isn't the best um but i'm gonna conclude this video here thank you guys for watching um if you enjoyed and you want to see more full self-driving content or tesla content in general hit the subscribe button and like I said earlier in the video, if you're planning on buying a Tesla vehicle, definitely use that referral link in the description. Um, it, it'll allow you to get some kind of deal. Tesla changes the deals all the time. So it was $1,000 off of your vehicle. And then sometimes it changes to something else like free full self-driving. So either way, there's a benefit. So use that referral link. Um, and right now we're auto parking where we started off but hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out